Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nerd Culture with the Sons of Glitches. I'm Remy. We got John, we got Mike, and we got Neil with us today. Full house. What's up, fellas? How we doing? Absolutely. Hi. Hello. Wunderbar. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Mike's not a total creeper, Hi. just sort of. <laughs> so, uh, right before the podcast, John and I were talking. Um, I was playing some Battleborn. Yeah, it's been a minute since I played, and we used to play the ever-loving shit out of that game. And uh, we were talking about how unfortunate it was that it released within, what, two weeks of Overwatch? And two like weeks that. after Overwatch, too. Yeah. It wasn't even, like, two weeks before or something. I, like I, th I think it was Overwatch had a beta, Battleborn released, and then Overwatch released, if I remember yeah. correctly. So it got sandwiched right in between that, and everybody saw it like, well, this is a fucking Overwatch clone. So... I, I believe Which, that was a reason to, to schedule do this early on. on. It's not. Oh, absolutely not. It's an incredible that, yeah, game. That, that game is so far away from Overwatch. It's ridiculous. The <laughs> only similarity is their character based uh, well, yeah. classes. That's about it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you can you can say that about tons of different shooters. Exactly. I mean, the 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 the, the only thing the, the problem that Battleborn had is that it looked a little too much like Overwatch. Yeah. And Does it though? It, 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 from if, a single if trailer just, yes if you're just looking okay. at okay, fair enough. i mean i mean physically like at a glance you see a 30 minute or a 30 second clip of each game they look similar ish and that's enough and you know for for sort of a casual consumer like somebody who's not a huge gearbox fan hmm, didn't yeah, know anything about board, uh, borderlands or anything like that like you know like me i i saw a trailer for battleborn and i was like that looks like overwatch to me yeah, you know, and the the thing that Battleborn had that that Overwatch did not was the where it shines. I mean, yes, besides the, the campaign. Well, the campaign is where where it shines. I think yeah, that that was absolutely its, its strong point, and the characters are hilarious. Um, I was just playing it. I, God, I've probably put probably near seventy or more hours into it, and I just heard a line that I had never heard before. The amount of audio in that game just. It's incredible to me. Um, yeah, absolutely. But and, you know, the the funny thing is, Remy, is that I remember when they launched, you got Overwatch Day One, or yep. close enough, and I got Battleborn Day One. I didn't, and I didn't get yep. Overwatch. And I remember talking to you about it and saying, "Dude, you need to get Battleborn." And you're like, "No, it, I have Overwatch." You know, and it took right, and um, I I absolutely fell for the same thing. Yeah, it took it took quite a bit of convincing. Um, but eventually you did do it, and then and then uh, now dare I say that you like it better than Overwatch. So, oh, for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, easily. You know, and it was um, just one of those things, and, and I feel like that that perception was probably common amongst everyone. You know. Oh, that was that was its death, hundred percent. Yeah, there's there's absolutely no question about it because the people that actually take the time to play the game, I don't know anyone that has played it and didn't care for it. Right. Yeah. Here's the interesting thing about Battleborn, though to me and you guys have played it a lot more than i have obviously but battleborn's a moba yeah yeah uh or yeah. the multiplayer yeah. is a moba yeah Sorry. the multi the, ba the multiplayer in battleborn's uh, i mean that that is moba gameplay it's first person perspective but that is pure moba so yeah, for sure. the 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 interesting thing about it is i i have never really seen uh a moba done that way I was shocked uh, at how effective... Smite a little bit, but that's about it. Uh, well, yeah, a little bit. But I mean, I was shocked how effective it is. I was shocked how um, fun it is. And mm -hmm. they, they did an excellent job of, of taking FPS and MOBA mechanics and making them dance together really nicely. I mean, and... Yeah. and um, and it's a beautiful game. It really is. It I really mean, is. Physically, Fantastic. it's really, really pretty. But the, the interesting thing is that, you know, that seems, I, I, I for me, it was a really great marriage uh, of an FPS and a MOBA. Maybe part of the problem that game has is, generally speaking, those two audiences don't overlap a whole lot. Mm, uh, that uh, does make sense. And, and, yeah. and yeah, so, you know, you've got this, you know, you've got League of Legends and, you know, Dota and... and uh, all that, all that kind of, you know, that crowd who are hyper devoted to those games for the most part, you know, guys, right, guys, right. guys who play a lot of League of Legends, which you know, I mean, I've downloaded, I've played a little bit. It's a really fun game, but 
people who play that really fucking play that and they don't wander out to too too far outside of their comfort zone generally and you can say the same thing about hardcore fps players so when you have something that is asking both of those groups to get out of their comfort zone like that i i think you're while it's new and different and and for somebody you know for people like us who are not devotees strictly speaking of either of those genres in in a really strict sense it's really fun because it's taken two things that were kind of like oh that's kind of fun oh that's kind of cool and you're mashing (laughs) them together and it's making a brand new thing but if i'm a diehard league of legends player i'm a diehard you know i don't know pick your fps and they're you know a call of duty guy i'm like well i can just go play League of Legends and get the MOBA experience that I want. I don't have to deal with this. Yeah, FPS why would I bullshit. bother with this? Right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe, maybe that was the problem with it. Yeah. Maybe, uh, but I honestly, I think it was the timing that it came out. The release date, I think, is what was the driving factor. Well, and I would also argue that um, there are more people in our boat of like, well, I'm not dedicated to either one of those things than there are people dedicated to e- either one of those things. I think the vast majority of gamers are probably like, eh, I played a mobile for a little while. It was okay. Oh, I played some I played some first person shooters. Right. They're not Fair dedicated enough. to either one. Fair so enough. So they didn't market, but they didn't market it that way. No, they didn't. But the, the other problem is, Neil, how many of those people that are not, you know, that fall in that middle ground are willing to go out and spend 60 bucks on a genre mashup that they're not particularly interested right. in either genre? It's a, yeah, it's a new IP for one. Right. Um, there's no hype around it. Like, you know, a Marvel game or anything like that, or like, you know, there's no legacy to it, you know? Yeah. I mean, if that had, if that had had, if that game had had the word borderlands in the title. Yeah. I'll bet you, you would have seen very, very different numbers. Yeah. I imagine so. But then you'd also had, have had a lot of people pissed off because it's not strictly borderlands. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, they could have called it, you I know, got two. I got two it. words for you: Apex Legends. I mean, you know, Titanfall. Well, okay, fair, Titanfall. Fair. But you <laughs> know, could have literally I, called I, it Borderlands Battleborn and like called them all Battleborns. You know what I mean? People that, like people of the Borderlands universe or whatever that are God. these you know legends more or less in certain ways. And I don't know if that would have done well or been like the solution to that, but it's you know a way to do that. I but, think you know, it would have been a step in the right direction. It could have been, and but whether or not um, it was a good idea or not, I think that they specifically wanted this to be something different because they had yes. such success with Borderlands of of putting together. I remember when the trailers for the first Borderlands launched, their tagline was "An FPS and an RPG had a baby." You remember this? <laughs> that was yeah. it. Yeah. That was that was the commercial, and they had such success with putting those things together, which wasn't super common really at all at that at the time of the first one released. It was kind of a unique feel. Um, yeah, it was. They had such a such a good success with that. Obviously, here you know, huge hype train coming through this year for the third game. Um, that they wanted to do something similar, marrying those two genres together. Um, God damn! Can you can you imagine if they put some of the Battleborn characters into Borderlands Three? How fucking cool that would be! And here's the but, thing: like that doesn't ma- the storylines don't marriage perfectly in any way. But oh, like, I don't care about the storyline. I'm but just it, talking about the usability I know, I'm just, of the characters. <laughs> Remy, yeah, but I'm Remy saying like storyline are not best buddies. Oh fuck well, off! Well, no, but here's the thing: if you keep that in mind, when you, <laughs> if you keep the idea that you're making it in the Borderlands universe in some way, shape, or form, you can get around that. You can say these are characters that are planets that you've never seen or races that you know. Right, I'm just talking because about the new... usability of the characters and the way they would, because they yeah. are very, very gearbox in mm-hmm. nature, they would work very well as Borderland DLC characters. Or it would um, be it would be something something as simple as I don't I don't think they would take the time to make them playable characters, though that would be kind of neat. But it could be something as simple as one of the planet destinations you go to is the Battleborn planet, you know, when you can oh. go, and then that's just a game mode that you can play, you know. Um, which might give them a little cross pollination because because what I was telling you before, um, and it's, it's still true, is that Battleborn's actually still getting support. I mean, they're they're yeah, that, that blows my mind. I didn't realize yeah, that they're doing they're doing balance changes, they're doing new skins and stuff. So you know they they still are committed to to having it work. And obviously, I would say that there's enough of a player base around it to where it makes sense for them to do that. I mean, you know, if, if literally nobody's playing. You know, why would they continue yeah. to, to give it that support? So, uh, you know, obviously it's not nearly as big as Overwatch with the, with the Overwatch League and, and things like this, but 
Oh God, not by a long there's, shot. There's <laughs> enough of a following where it, where it is well, that. So obviously they're 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 committed to making it work. Now, I, you know, we haven't heard anything about a, a new one, but um, something to point some people that direction that maybe weren't willing to try it because they didn't really understand. Like me, when I saw the first trailers for it, and that's the reason I bought it first over over Overwatch, is I love Borderlands so much. I knew it was the same people, yeah. you know, and I was like, man, this looks fucking awesome. And um, yeah, you say Gearbox, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it up. Right. Even if it takes a little bit of convincing from you. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Even if I've got to twist your arm. Um, right. Yeah, but exactly. So, you know, that, that that's kind of how I saw it. Dude, I would love for them to visit visit one of the board, uh, Battleborn planets in Borderlands 3. That would be that would be such a fun cross-pollination, you know. Sure. Even if they don't actually, the like, bring any of the characters in or anything like that, but they just kind of do a nod to Borderlands well, and, like, do those kind of environments. It could be a like, lot of fun. Like John was saying, if they did introduce some of the characters and people get to meet some of these characters, like, oh, these these guys are awesome. Oh, shit, this is from Battleborn? What? And, you know, you see Sales Spike. Um, yeah. And, then uh, and Battleborn's free to play now. Certain right. Characters. Yeah, and speaking, speaking of which, like, the whole, like, giving life to an old IP, it's very similar to what's going on with Titanfall 2 and, uh, well, what went on for a little bit with Titanfall 2 because of Apex Legends. Be- because people were like, oh, man, this gunplay is really fun. I mean, See, I, I, not, exactly not any it. of you guys. That was another but, you know. game that got trounced because of the, its release date. Um, yeah. And, and Apex did a great job of bringing it back. And to an extent. And at least people tried it. And like people realized, I think it was getting a little bit of revitalization. People that may have tried it, Titanfall a few times, but not like given it a lot of go. Maybe wanted to go back and play a little bit of the multiplayer. I've heard of people actually going and playing the multiplayer in uh, Titanfall 2 simply because of the fact that they wanted to get better at the gunplay in Apex Legends. Mm. They found that that was a really... Because because of it's how practice, quickly right? the matches turn overs and you die and you're like back resurrected three seconds later, you get a lot more gunplay in that. And well, so I know were, when, when we played Apex, I hated life. We played it for an hour and then we switched over to Titanfall 2 because I love the gameplay, but Mm -hmm. I didn't care for the game. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, you know, that's fine. I I think people were finding similar things or not exactly the same thing, but similar things to that. Right. And so they, they found they wanted to go back and play some Titanfall too. We did it and people, people started doing it. It'd be really interesting to see something like that with Borderlands three and, uh, and sure. Battleborn. I don't know what they could do to make that happen because I think I think Borderlands 3 is going to be such an expansive game. Nobody's going to oh. want to stop playing it to go back and play Battleborn. But it is interesting to think about that parallel. I am I'm God, I'm so beside myself with excitement with that game. Are you really? I'm, oh yeah. my god, I was Hadn't so noticed. fucking excited. Hadn't so noticed. <laughs> it, it is interesting though that 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 Neil brings up Titanfall because that that was another another game that uh, kind of fell victim to this same trap um, as far as release dating. Uh, I will bring up Titanfall anytime I can. Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't think you can. You, you can't lay all this at the feet of release date. I'm sorry, but you just can't. For I, those two games, I think you absolutely can. I, no, I, I have to disagree no, with you there. I'm sorry, you can't. I, <laughs> oh, look, I game, am. <laughs> you, you can, but I'm saying that ignores too many other factors. Okay. It, 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 I'm sorry, it just does. And and in the case, look, nothing happens in a vacuum. All right, you you can lay some of it at the feet of the release date, sure. But okay, so the, I, I agree the, with you actually, Mike. The, I think the, there's there a, is... there's multifacets of what caused the issue specifically with Titanfall two. I know those because I've looked into them. Like I was baffled as to why the game that I loved and played for about a year solid every night, like when I get home and I play like half an hour game, I'd throw Titanfall two on, and I was baffled by the fact that it was not doing well. And I looked into it, and it it was a few different things. One, a huge peop- amount of people didn't know that it was a cross-platform game. They thought it was only on Xbox, like the first one. Huh. Like I literally would talk to people and be like, oh, yeah, I'm play- I've been playing a lot of Titanfall 2. They're like, oh, yeah, I wanted to play that, but it was only Xbox. I'm like, oh, no, you should check it out. They're like, what? It's on PC? Uh, like They put a first-person shooter like that on PC? I went, yeah, absolutely, and it's a lot of fun. And like Titanfall 2 is on pe- PS4 as well. Yeah, and PS4, people thought it was still an Xbox One exclusive. Yeah, I, And I think I, Battleborn, I think, did the same thing. They did not market it well enough to sh- explain that, hey, this is not just a multiplayer game. There's a cool campaign in this. Right. And it's it's a it's a good long campaign. It's not as long as Borderlands, necessarily, but it's a decent campaign. And it's longer than Titanfall 2's campaign, for sure. Well, and it's got a really unique way of handling the leveling. Um, I agree. I have never seen anything quite like it. Because you basically start from zero 
every time. on each character at the, at the yeah. beginning of every level. Well, yeah, right. So the so you guys are all making parts of the point that I was driving at, which which is that. <laughs> Ultimately, this is... Damn it, I'm playing into his hands. Well, Wait, no, we're agreeing with you? Damn it. But <laughs> this is a combination of factors. It's a combination of, t- of a genre mashup that... Uh, and I'm standing by that assessment, by the way. I think a genre... Specifically in the case of Battleborn, Titanfall 2 is a different story. But, but in the case of something like Battleborn, you have a genre mashup that is appealing to two very dedicated fan bases of genres that have no crossover. You have a, you have a new IP that is not marketed properly to the right audience. You have a release date that is right next to one of the biggest new IPs. That's been super hyped by one of the most famous developers on the planet. And sorry. And that goes for both of those. After after that fucking, I've talked for like four hours straight last night between that interview and then, (laughs) and then, and then streaming and my voice is shot. Um, Brag about it. But um, if if you take all that together, yes, absolutely. It was a death note, uh, a a death sentence for the game, but there's something to be said for it. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, but gearbox isn't two guys in a trick duck operating out of a garage in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, those guys have resources. No. They have they have a marketing team. They have a PR team. They have people whose job it is to make sure that kind of shit doesn't happen. Sure. And, uh, and so, they fucked up. <clears throat> well, it, that's exactly right. So that, I'm sorry, but that's a failure on their part. That's a failure on the part of the studio to not. There's no way you shouldn't have seen that coming. No, of course, and I completely agree. But the vast majority of the issue was release date. Yes, there are other factors, of course. Well, then change but... the fucking release date. I, I, I mean, so, what's what's the goddamn mystery so, here out so of everything reason, i just laid out that's the easiest the, thing to fix all you have to do right. is say hey guys we're going to release this in october instead of august that's yeah. not and rocket honestly science. Yeah. well then that's that that's wasn't exactly their the call though trying to get after is that is that yes there are obviously other you know mitigating factors here but a, a shift in release date which is the easiest thing to do um would have would have fixed some of, of the the deficit that was lost there for these some years. of it yes and yeah and i think um i'm not I, saying it would have EA been is a, actually on record for saying wonderful that they thought that um success. people would just buy titanfall and they would also buy battlefield because they thought oh well they're such different games one's a slower pace slower paced game yeah, where death means that. a lot <laughs> and titanfall is a fast-paced game where death means le- less and they thought oh they're so different that people will buy both of them it's like no people only have a certain amount of income for that season or that qu- that quarter they're not going to buy three games, including, uh, you know, I think Call, Call of Duty. Of Duty. Out right there at the same time, yeah. Yeah, it was the the sequence of of releases was literally Call of Duty, Titanfall two, Battlefield one. It's it was it's kind of an insane thing to think about doing, but they did it, and it's just like well, and oh, and if you look at um the marketing level of Titanfall one compared to two, Titanfall one, you literally had malls with a whole Titan inside of it. Like yeah. they had a giant ass Titan in the middle of like a street as a marketing thing. Titanfall 2's marketing, their best marketing was their Twitter handle, which was hilarious during that time. But nobody's paying attention to it because nobody knew that Titanfall 2 was on a bunch of different systems. So yeah. it it was frustrating to see that happen to a game that I loved so much. And oh, I totally I totally sympathize how you guys felt about Battleborn and its release. <laughs> I did join you guys with Battleborn after a little bit, and I agree with you on is on that. Like on the oh yeah, we we ran on the enjoyment that a of that with you and uh, Jet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want to make sure I was only singing the praise of Titanfall two, and that I never played Battleborn because I did, and I did enjoy Battleborn quite a bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I you know what I still I to this day I swear to God I will hundred percent that game. It's fucking difficult. That is one of the toughest games to to hundred yeah. percent uh, in my opinion. Just hours and so, hours of I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take that just and 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 run with it maybe a different way and we might come back or we might not I don't know but when you say uh, uh to hundred percent this game there's something that I've recently learned that I didn't know because I don't own the PlayStation but they actually have a name for that on PlayStation oh yeah it's uh, oh it's a platinum yeah make yeah getting a platinum right yep Xbox man, man sippy cup there's nothing like that we you know we sound like idiots saying I'm trying to hundred percent stuff. We yeah, need, I know. We, I, need, it, we need some official names. Some so games can, have that achievement. We could but slap our e out on the, on the table. Shout, yeah, yeah, shout out to right. uh, Platinum Squad. <laughs> 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 right. um, but yeah, I, I, so I, I think somebody, um, 
Hey, so the, 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 the Platinum on PS4 is basically analogous to a thousand gamer score on, on Xbox. Correct. Right, um, essentially, it's the same that, thing. Right? That's what it's, it boils down to. It's a trophy to, that so. says you did that. Right. So going going by going by that, I think John, you have the most out of any of us. Um, oh yeah. I mean, but you know, you big old fucking achievement whore. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the the interesting thing about that is, though, it, it it tells you a lot about who that who a person is is, is a, as a gamer. If you look at the amount of time they have played versus their gamer score. So somebody like uh, 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 Heathen is, mm-hmm. is a really, really good example of this. So there's a guy who lives and breathes video games in a lot yeah. of ways, plays a ton. Looking at his gamer score, which is, it, so this is the, the point I'm getting at here is gamer score is kind of a false indicator. So he's really good at the games he plays, but he only plays like five or six games that's what he's into. So right. if you're a guy like that and, and and that's really all you do, then in the console world, you can crank thousands of hours into those games, but eventually you run out of achievements because there's only so many of them. You know, I mean, yeah. which, you know, for me, it's Witcher 3. I put hundreds and hundreds of hours to that game. There's only 73 achievements. I've got them all. I can keep playing that for the rest of my life. I'm never going to, you know... My, my gamer score, which is a false barometer at that point, doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, that's not, that sounds like the opinion of somebody with a low gamer score. <laughs> on the opposite <laughs> side, you guys know Hold how on. much time I, I, I have heard that. Did you say that sounds like the complaints of somebody with a lower gamer score? That is what I said. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So on the opposite side of that, you know how many hours I've put into Borderlands 2 and Halo Reach. Those two oh. games oh, I've sure. probably put in well over... A thousand hours each. I have not hundred percented either of those games, just because those hours were not spent trying to get the achievements. They were spent doing other things, like in Halo Reach, it was racing. No, I get just that. Fucking forever. <clears throat> Speaking of racing. which, my fr- my biggest frustration is I could probably hundred percent that game if it weren't for all the multiplayer achievements. Well, do them anyway. <laughs> oh, well, fuck and, you. but R- R- Remy, that, that you know that what thinks. that entails. I do. That, that that but that brings up an interesting point is when I'm saying that doesn't tell you who somebody like none of those numbers tell you who that person is as a gamer. Oh, absolutely. It, it, so you you don't I would play say some of those a lot of the kinds help. of games that um you know for so the the destinies the divisions the um you know the you know the Call of Duties the you know the League of Legends those games that really like a, a person will latch onto as like that's their game. Right, if you, you know th- those games don't appeal to you, so no, not at all. You, you 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 will go and you'll f- you, and which is completely fine, obviously. Like I'm not saying that's a, <laughs> that's a wrong thing to do. I'm just saying you, you'll you'll play something and you'll spend your time in it, and then you'll go and you'll find something else, and then you go and you find something else, and you just sort of go on down the line. In in contemporary gaming culture, there's tons of people that don't do that. I'm a dinosaur. So, you know, the, the, so that's why a game like, um, you know, Warcraft or League of Legends or, or whatever have their own achievement ecosystem built into the game. Right. And it, and it doesn't reflect anything outside of that particular game because they, they need to keep, you know, achievements are psychologically, psychologically significant, right? They're, they're, yeah. you know, it, it's Pavlov, it, it's Pavlov's dog. It's ding, ooh, food, ding, ooh, food, you know? <laughs> and and it, so th- there's, there's an interesting, I'm sure there's research that's been done on that. Oh, that I haven't and hours, I'm read sure. any of, but um, it, it, it's an interesting thing to think about, which is ultimately who gives a shit? Like, uh, you know, w- because it, it comes it comes down to how you play and what you play right. um, much more than anything else, unless you're, you know, sitting over there like John, all smug and ginger with your 150,000 <laughs> gamer score well, that think, you, you know, touch yourself at night you thinking about a, your big pervert. I think one of those things that you said in there is a, a really good aspect of achievements is is the how you play. There are several achievements out there that are all about how you play and playing differently than you normally would play. Like there's achievements out there for um, the big one that I had that I pinned to my uh, 
my gamer tag profile for a long time was was the um, dying no more than five times inside of uh, um, limbo. Limbo. Yeah, that's right. That is that one took me three nights. It took me three nights of like sitting down for an hour or two each night and just kind of trying it, trying it, trying it, and getting used to every single trap and every single little nook and cranny of that stupid ass game. <laughs> I, I really like that game, by the way. It's a great um, game. But I finally got it. And when I got it, I was like standing up with my hands in the air like I just won a goddamn trophy, which I guess I, did. I had. <laughs> yeah. But but it was just – and it's not so much for me. That that literally was the last achievement for me. But that achievement right there is as good as a platinum trophy to me. Yeah. So sure. let, that, actually, so that's an interesting question So to, to Remy and to John. Do you guys have like a, an achievement moment that actually – meant something to you at all or has it always just been like blip okay move on um i i, I certainly get that uh rush of like oh cool i got an achievement what what did i do <laughs> i'm i'm very <sighs> rarely actually hunting for the achievement i typically like you you guys have seen the way i play i find a game i really like uh borderlands halo um gta and i find unique ways to play it not the way the developer necessarily wants me to play it. So I don't typically get the achievements because of that, but it's, it's fun for me. So if I do get an achievement along the way, it's exciting. Yes, of course, but it's a rare occasion when I'm actually hunting. Um, so John. So, so me, I'm exactly the opposite. So typically what I'll do is I'll play through the game, a game, whatever game it is. Um, and whatever pops up during that playthrough, um, you know, it is what it is. Okay, cool. Because typically the ones that play, you know, that pop just while you're playing are beat chapter one. You know, beat chapter, you know, if you're playing, you're going to get that. Anyway. That's, that's no Press big deal. A. <laughs> um, two things that, that particularly excite me, though, because I, after I finish, if it's a game that I enjoyed enough to play more of, I'll go back and, and, and 100% it. That's, that's just something that I do. But uh, two things that get, that, that get me pumped up is, A, if I get that last one, to, to complete the thousand gamer points or more yeah. if it's a game with DLC. And two, if I see something that pops up that is so that is super, super rare, like they give you an extra little diamond there if it's like lower than 10% of total gamers which have that. Which is a great addition, by the way, to cool. the way achievements. Work. I don't get super stoked if it's like 9% Agreed. or 10%, but if, it, if it's like 0.2% or something like that, I get pumped up. I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm in the top point two percent. I'm better than all of them. Button, you know. <laughs> so, so that'll that'll get me pretty pumped up. And then, like I said, finishing off a game completely, um, which I've done uh, in the mid teens, mid teens probably of games, a hundred percent. That gets me pumped up. I think I've uh, I've completed three games, hundred <laughs> percent. Two of them. I think were I'm Lego about like games. seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely I, takes I, it uh, definitely takes this because some of them, like Neil was saying you really have to do like weird stuff to get it like right right you know i'll tell you one that i uh was similar to that was uh an achievement called if they came to hear me beg in halo reach i fucking and if, I got and if that. you know that achievement by name you know why i enjoyed it yeah <laughs> yeah um one of my uh the of the three games that i have 100 percented uh two of them are lego games and that's pretty much the only time I'll ever really achievement hunt, except for like uh, Battleborn or a game I really like. I might go into it if it seems doable. Um, but the Lego games, my wife will actually play with me. Yep. So I take every chance I get. I'm like, okay, we're going to play the shit out of this game and complete it 100%. So we've done that a couple times with, uh, and we're working on another one right now. So it's a, that those games are an exception to that rule because I will absolutely 100% all of those. Yeah. You know, it, I it, yeah, that's, love and, them. and, and, you know, I, I, I gloat a little bit because my game score is pretty big, but, um, I, I ultimately, Mike, I do agree with you. I, I don't think that it really matters or really reflects anybody's nah. uh, status as a gamer. Um, but for me, it's, or it's value just, as a human or value as a human. Yeah. Well. But for me, it, it is just fun. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, even, even to an extent that me and Neil did this one time or a, a few times actually, where we would go and play Overwatch for a night and my sole objective for the night was getting achievement. Oh, yeah. really? You know. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> right. So. I certainly don't I certainly <laughs> Mike, don't remember Mike, losing a Mike, bunch you, of games. Mike, you, were there, you, you were there only when I was hunting for that diva bomb. So that, that was only one thing. Annoying. But uh 
you know, there was there was a couple of there was a couple of few streams that we that me and Neil did together, just the two of us, and and that's that's all I did. I went through. I had a literally had a piece of, of paper on my table with all the achievements that I needed for the characters and how to get them, or not how to get them, but you know, I mean, you know, the parameters of getting them, and um, I would just start start at the top and go to the bottom. And that's what and that's what I do when I when I hunt. I get a piece of paper mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. and I make a checklist and I go down the checklist. No, I know, and I, I'm 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 just giving you shit, really. But uh, I, I I understand that. I the 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 only game that I've ever methodically and you I'm you guys know what game I'm going to say. I'm, I'm but, at the edge of my seat until you say it. Yeah, yeah. CD Projekt Red, are you listening? It, it, yeah, CD Projekt Red, if you're listening, Witcher Three, he dropped a coin in the bucket. But I mean, that, that, that that was the only one I ever did that with, where I, where I was like, I, I am so in love with this game that I, I I'm not going to feel like I've spent my time in it until I'm done with this. And it, it, it took me Jesus a two years to do it all. It, it, yeah. it just be, but the reason it took two years is because one of the achievements was bugged and oh, it took, yeah. and it took me forever to figure it out, uh, to figure Which out a workaround. It? And I finally did. And when I and I, I I remember the name of the achievement. It's called "I Wore Offieri Before It Was Cool," and when that thing popped, and it said like you know point whatever, you know one seven percent of gamers have yeah. completed this. It sent me out of my chair, slapping my you know Witcher tattooed forearms together. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, like that was a big deal. But I mean, for the most part, yeah, I, I, it's just like, ooh, achieves, fun. Although, although I will say, as much as I don't really give a shit about achievements, it does kind of annoy me when a game doesn't give them to me. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was just thinking that like, in your inside run. Yeah, because I, 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 I'm now at Castle a point crashes. where I've got... Castle Crashers, yeah. It's like <laughs> I've gotten so used to seeing the, you know, every now and then, it doesn't need to be all the time, but I just every now and then a little boop on the screen, you know, just being like, hey... You're doing good, buddy. You should keep playing. Go <laughs> um, you. Yeah, it's like good for <laughs> you. Let me tussle your hair there. <laughs> Go and you're a good. You're a good little gamer, and you know. So, but you get so used to that. Uh, uh, you really that do. after if, if it doesn't come, you're you're like, where's my where's my treat? You know, like where, where, you know, where's why where's my, my why fat? is my mouth salivating and there's not a treat inside of it? What's going on here? Yeah, it's you know, bullshit. it's kind of funny. I I claim not to care about achievements. But I think that's one of the reasons I don't play a lot of Switch or PlayStation because I've got this ecosystem that I'm tied to, that I've got this reasonable score. It's not a huge gamer score, but I've got this system that I'm tied to. And if I'm going to play a game, well, why, why the fuck wouldn't I get more achievements for it? All right. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you down for a second and say no bullshit because you showed me a fucking website dedicated to achievements. Oh, I how love the, like looking metric at scores are sure. and all that bullshit of like, oh no, whatever about gamer scores. You showed me a website called trueachievement.com, which shows you your it's ratio of one hundred percent games to non hundred percent games, which shows you the percentage of people that have played that game and gotten an achievement on it, but not gotten the achievement that you're looking at. It shows you how to unlock them, gives you guides, all sorts of other crazy shit. But you're like, no, oh achievements, whatever. Sure, bullshit. Neil's bullshit. About, Neil's about to get turned up, man. We need to. No, at the at the end of the day, I don't care that much. <laughs> that well, so trueachievements.com, by the way, fun fact is where John goes at night instead of Pornhub. Um, <laughs> well, he has two tabs. Both and yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> This hand, this is my Pornhub hand. This hand, <laughs> this is my true achievements hand. And when they get together, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> look out! When they get together, right. achievement unlocked. <laughs> Neil, to address that, I do enjoy getting achievements. I'm not going to lie. I, I really do enjoy. And every so often I'll see one like, oh, that looks like a fun one to do. I'm going to I'm going to check it out when I get a new game. Yes, I look at the achievement list. I see if it's even feasible, if it seems like it's going to be ridiculous or I'm going to have to pour thousands of hours into it. I'm not going to bother. I might go for the summer, some of the lower hanging fruit. But at least with that website, I know what the lower hanging fruit is. I so I have even, an idea. Yeah, so that's interesting, though. I, I I don't even go into. I, I don't look at that stuff. 
eh, I think it's fun to know what what's available. And if I'm in an area, I'm like, oh, cool. Actually, I know that there's something I can do in here that can pop an achievement real quick. So I don't go out of my way hunting them. But at the same time, if I'm aware of it, I'll yeah, I'll go for it. For, for me, there's there's two things with that is I will either one it's a simple small game like a $10 game or something like that that I know has a thousand gamer score. That's not outlandish for me to just go for it and get it. Or B, it's a game that I love so much that I'm going to want 100% it. And yeah. um, the first one for that was Sunset Overdrive, which was a lot of fun to do. Um, uh, could not get into that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because you're wrong. It's okay, though. Very hard. What's what's wrong with you guys? I, I just, it had nothing that, for that's all, That's a different kind of podcast for another time. <laughs> watch, Remy's like I, welcome to Remy's like, what's it wrong has with nothing you guys for with the sense of glitches yeah <laughs> yeah right he's like I, you know it has nothing Therapy. for me but literally it's the same kind of humor as Borderlands for me like the hey. self-aware oh. silliness like, we're about to in terms start of, we're about to we're about to listen to a fight but I'm yeah. just saying like it has a little bit of that self-aware humor it's it's I'm just it just <laughs> baffled me that he's like nah it, it, it was an okay game <laughs> Yeah, there was nothing there. I, it just there, it had nothing. There, so everyone that's listening, please take note. If you ever want to just instantly piss Remy off, compare literally anything to Borderlands. That's all you got to do. Literally anything. He's not <laughs> wrong. You know, Remy, I think the teachings of Jesus are really similar to I Borderlands, just in terms of just just in terms of global much. impact and the, the sort of that might of, be the one thing you, you get away with. <laughs> really, really, the sort of Jesus. impact they've had Jesus. on mankind. I, well, I, see, I, I no, think the difference. The difference there. One of them's real. Oh, so we're, oh, we're just going to lay oh, that out right now. Oh, 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 oh. carrot's going to carrot's going to be angry with you. Dude. We appreciate well, any man. religious listeners that that kept up with us we this do. far. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> or we won't. I mean, depends on what you believe. Right? I'm just. I, I I'm, 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 I'm just. Gonna, how funny would it have been if right after that had come out of his mouth, we just heard a lightning bolt just rip through the roof and then dead silence? That would have been pretty funny. <laughs> well, I love that he used that as an al- or used that as an analogy when like literally Borderlands Three has the uh, psycho on the front with like dude, that's fucking like, fantastic. Emblem. Yeah, that is pretty funny. Like it's like like it's literally the third coming. I know. <laughs> it's, it's well, it, it, but I mean, it's also you know that that's Gearbox's we're bigger than Jesus moment, right? That's right. You know, the, yeah. the Beatles yeah. did it. We can do it. We're bigger than Jesus. Um, but I mean, Jesus was probably actually pretty short. Um. You know, considering the average height of men in those days, he was probably like Danny DeVito <laughs> size. Is that what our podcast is now? That's that's where it's going, apparently. <laughs> yep. Well, look. So, uh, uh, I, I, I let, let's let's move away from Santa Jesus and <laughs> talk about uh, talk about something else. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if there is a hell we're all going oh, straight Jesus there God. yeah you know it's oh maybe uh, you are i'm I'll be driving they, the bus. i hope they like podcasts there because we, we can do that now that well, they, <laughs> yeah, i know fun. they don't let gingers in because i'm sure you'll need a soul so oh yeah, yeah. um i've often wondered what sorry happens to i i mankind. i i <laughs> <laughs> To my kind. (laughs) (laughs) Joke's on you, devil. I have nothing to sell. Yeah, what? What do you want from me? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So, um, fuck, I had something else and now I've lost it. (laughs) So, oh, I remember what it was. So, the weird weird thing for me about, especially Uh. over the last... um, the last few months is that I, I'm not really playing anything if I'm not streaming it. So it, it just because it's a time thing, right? So sure. the, the, the couple of three hours a day that I, that I used to be able to, I would just sit down and, and play whatever. Um, I'm now using that time to do performance art on Twitch basically. And the, so w- when I'm looking at a game now, I'm looking at it much more as, okay, how... What will this look like? Or how will this play? Or, like, how will I react to it? And because the way I react to it is going to be how the audience reacts to it. So, you know, like something like um, uh, Dead Space, which I just started streaming and I'm actually having a lot of fun with. It's a really, really fun game. But, I mean, like, that came out in 2008. You know, I never touched it. Um, 
and to sort of pick it up now, like when I was looking at that, I, I didn't evaluate it on like, you know, it, like to, to look at the achievements list or go to trueachievements.com or anything like it would never have occurred to me in a million years. All I knew about it was that this is supposed to be one of the scariest games ever made. I love watching other people play horror games because it's fucking hilarious. And <laughs> shout out to Gemma. <clears throat> shout out to Gemma and Adventurous April, by the way. Um, another one of our another one of our great community members. She it, it's basically nothing but her her streams or nothing but her doing like oh god at every single noise, and it's the funniest <laughs> so thing I've ever me. seen in my fucking life. It's so great. <laughs> it, it's yeah, she's like the female gambit. Basically, See, it's just there's a about, reason oh. I don't play horror games. Oh, God, I wish you would. But, you know, but, uh, for stream, I will absolutely fucking do that. hundred percent. Yeah. But I mean, but like, that's how I'm evaluating a game. I'm like, this is going to be fun for me to play for this reason. And because of that, it's going to be fun for who, whoever's watching on Twitch. So, you know, achievements have become sort of a nice little you know, if I ever get back to a point in my life, God willing, where I can just play games just for fun, like for myself on my own time, um, you know, maybe I'll start caring about that again. But right now, it just I, I don't even really notice it uh, until one pops up or until I go like a really long stretch without getting one. Um, yeah. that, then I'll notice it. I don't know. For for me, it's every now and then I'll just go into the list. And I'll be like, I'll look through some of them it's like, oh, you know. On this level, there's this one on there. So I'll just go like, you know, a minute out of my way to get it. But every now and then I find one on that list that's just like, that's weird and I have to have it. <laughs> Fondle your balls in front of the enchanted mirror. Yes, master. Um, <laughs> basically. Um, oh, you, you, guys didn't, you Mike, guys didn't get that achievement? Okay. No, missed okay. that. Yeah. Um, Mike, but what you're saying about uh, the playing games for stream quality. I have, over the past couple years, we've been working on either the Sons of Glitches or the Nubiverse, whatever the case may be. So yep. I've been kind of in that mindset for the past three or more years. Right. And yes, occasionally I'll pick up a game because it just looks fun for me to play. But I think the last, I'm trying to remember the last time I was able to just sit down and enjoy a game. And I think it was right when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. I, I think that was the only one that I've actually played without streaming over the past year or more. Yeah. Uh, so, and and my time is limited as it is because I'm so fucking busy. But, um, yeah. So I I <laughs> I completely understand and agree with the way you're looking at games these days. It's it's a certain mindset that uh, Twitch creates. Well, yeah, but I want to be I, I want to be clear that that doesn't make it less fun. Oh God, no, it, it, no, no! It, I'm not it, complaining it, about that. It, so I, I mean, I, I, I'm realizing as we're sitting here talking about this, I may be making it sound like kind of a drudge and kind of a jo like you know, like job, um, nah. it, with with a capital J, and 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 it's not. Oh, I thought it's it was just, capital G. Thanks for clarifying. Gob. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, um, it just it 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 adds a very different dynamic to the experience of looking at a game and playing a game and it's fun in a different way so yeah. like borderlands 2 is the easiest example of this and thank you guys both by the way uh actually all three of you at one point or another hopped into that playthrough with me and and sort of carried my ass through and helped me um <laughs> that game was incredibly fun i still have no idea what happened yeah I, I i i don't because i know, so I know for, that kills me for well for for a bunch of reasons first of all I, I was always either talking to you guys, talking to Twitch chat, or I was drunk. Not a great com <laughs> not a great combination to retain See, really... characters and stories and jokes. And so that that's one of the things that I found is that I, I don't I can't retain that kind of stuff, and I can and I don't enjoy a game on that level if I'm playing it on Twitch. Um, because I'm I'm more focused on what's going on either with the audience or the person I'm playing with or, you know, there, there's always some level of conversation on. And I might just be too much of a country idiot to, <laughs> you know, like I can only focus on one thing at a time. So I, I can't, you know, if Claptrap is talking in my headphones, but I'm reading something in chat, I'm not hearing anything Claptrap is saying. I'm reading chat. Right, I can't right. do both. See, it kills me. It, it, it actually cracks me up that 
Borderlands 2 is one of my all-time favorite games, and I could tell you anything about that story. But it's like the one story-driven game that you've played and not paid attention to the story, where I'm normally the one that doesn't give a shit about the story. No, I granted, I, I, the, the irony is not lost on me here. <laughs> it's hilarious I, to me that the, I think the, that's the, awesome. The, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I want to pay attention to the story. I would have loved to have paid attention to the story because every time oh, I sure. did catch a snippet, it was fucking funny or it was interesting or there was some cool shit happening, and I was like, oh, you know. But like, you know, when Jack shot up, uh, Jack popped up. Uh, you know, spoilers for like a six or seven year old game. So cover your ears, <laughs> I guess. When Jack popped up behind um, a Green Beret oh, guy. Roland, Roland. And, yes. Uh, sure. Uh, and, nah. and, 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 <laughs> what, you see, but that's the thing. I don't know his fucking name. I don't know I his know, fucking that's, name. That's, that's, that's what's what's Mike, you want to know something hilarious. funny? You want to know something funny about the exact thing you're talking about? After that, we go to, after the general hub, after that big cutscene, right? Where that, all that stuff happens. And then something about a quest implies that he's dead. And I go, wait, Roland's dead? And they just <laughs> both of them threw up their arms and went, "Oh my god, what even like are we playing this game for?" Like, like I just, I literally, I was so distracted by everything else and just like uh, chatting with them me. and streaming it that I just had like I was not paying attention to the fact that you know one of these major characters that I had no attachment to is dead. Well, you would have had more attachment to him had you played the first That's game. Right. To be yeah, fair, he was a PC in the first game, right? Okay, and I probably wouldn't have re- realized that if I played the first game. To be honest. All right, well. Because I probably wouldn't have, because I probably would not have played him, and I wouldn't have cared about him. So, how many times? This interesting little exercise. And by the way, I'm very proud of us. We've talked about video games for basically this whole podcast, which is yeah, very, kind of very unlike us. A, um, first, I think. <laughs> except for that one little bit about Jesus. Um, yeah. Yeah, who brought but, that up? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, we'll edit that out in post. Um, <laughs> the so. How many times, Remy and John, have you guys played through Borderlands 2? Humor me with a number. Honestly, I couldn't count. Uh, guess. Um, I have all characters with the exception of Salvador maxed out. Okay, I don't uh, know who Salvador is, and that means nothing to me. Just give me a number. Well, I'm, 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 I'm working a number here. God damn, give me a second. <laughs> he's doing the math, okay? He's, uh, he's writing on chalk <laughs> on a class, and he's carrying the 19. Not to mention the number of times that I've helped people through with lower level characters and the plethora of characters I've just deleted because they're whatever. Oh, Jesus um, Christ, man. I've just so probably for X. Fuck off. I've probably played through it 50 or more times. <laughs> okay, 50 times. <laughs> Yeah. Of course Carry you can two. tell me every fucking thing that happens in that story. How oh, many yeah. ti- out, of, out of those 50, how many times did you play through by yourself without talking to anybody? Uh, not many, actually. Was it I, more I than two? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I, think, I think every time I played through with somebody else. I am a multiplayer guy, as we have discussed. <laughs> really? Are you? Yeah. Get this man some chimichangas and some not. multiplayer. He's good. Fucking dude, that that is my life right Chimichangas. there. Chimichangas, Chimichangas. I, I Chimich- know, I know. Wolf was about to mention that. Chimichangas, but... you fucking philistine. No, 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 no. He's right. He's right. It's chimichangas. They're from China, right? Yeah, That's why it's Chang. Oh, oh my god. Oh, yeah, give me a uh, give me Stop three now. chicken fajitas. Stop now. Can I get can I get a chicken fajitas. fajita? And can I get some jalapenos on those? <laughs> jalapenos. Um, jalapenos. I will have so, two tacos. No, John, with no I'm curious. Guacamole. What's your answer? How many times do you think you've played through? Well, I'm trying to think. It, it is hard when See? it gets so many. It's not that easy and i will i will say that <laughs> if you've done 50 i must have done more than you because my badass rank is way higher than yours is so oh, he, just pulled, he just pulled that out flexing that e peen john's right. john's just laying that big old ginger nut sack right on the right table, on the table. Yeah. here we go so hey i'm not worried which i've got do you think this is a two yeah, i've got i've got multiple multiple of each type of character with with more than one playthrough on it yeah i would say at least i mean if you're 50 i'd probably say i'm at least 60 to 70 yeah, I, I would believe that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Fucking great game. It's just so Fucking fun. Well, great. no, I mean, wait, I've okay, seen... so, so, wait, wait, Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah. How many times have you played through The Witcher 3? Three. Well, that was, that was a little disappointing. <laughs> well, The Witcher 3 is a lot longer game. You can bang out, you can bang out a Borderlands 2 playthrough in, in 10 hours, you know, if you skip side quests oh, okay. and just, and just grind it through. All right, Neil, how many times have you played through a Halo game? Oh, I thought you were going to ask me about Borderlands because the, the number is more than one. Um, all the way through, 
probably not more than one, but see the Halo games. I know I've played through Halo 2 all the way through at least 20 to 30 times. See, it's not just that, that game. Just that game because the fact that I had it on the original Xbox and it was the only one of the only games that I um, <laughs> had on that console. And I would just sit down and I would just play a few, three or four levels. At one point, I had a friend of mine who was trying to write a paper and she's sitting there going, I can't turn it on and just sit down and hear it. I'm like, you want to play some, you want to like just kill aliens for an hour? And we killed <laughs> aliens in Halo, in Halo 2 on e- like normal or easy for like an hour. And afterwards, she's like, yeah, I think I can, I think I can write this paper now. I'm good. Cool. Thanks. And like literally, I was like, all right, cool. And I just kept playing the campaign while she was working and stuff like that. Like literally, that's happened. And like I've just played through that campaign so many goddamn times. And it baffles Neil, me that that's people's least favorite. Neil, Neil was secretly I don't pissed that, that he offered that girl to go kill some aliens for an hour. And she thought he, he meant video games. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. He, he was really trying to find that wallet. <laughs> this man was looking for a wallet. Grab your wallet. <laughs> Hashtag eggplant Mondays. Oh, um, oh yeah. There it is. Well, they, I, I, I think it's it, it's an interesting thing to look at. So what, what I'm thinking about this entire time is just every single person that identifies as a gamer identifies as something different. Sure. Like even if you're, you know, we go back to the beginning of the podcast. It like, you know, I brought up like the the LOL players and the and the Call of Duty uh, Call of Duty players. Like even even those guys, I'll bet you if you asked you know asked ten of you know ten League of Legends pros like you know how they think of themselves, they give you ten completely different answers. It, yeah. the, 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 there's no because the they'll they'll internally identify. I identify as a tank. I identify as a you know a carry. Which right. Is, it starts. You know, it, it gets nuanced within that particular genre absolutely uh, so it, it, what's, what's you know i used to be an adventurer like you then i took an arrow to the knee so now i'm a guard like you know it's just pretty much yeah they're nice all adventurers we're all gamers reference. <laughs> well, you know they're all adventurers we're all gamers but we're different types of gamers yeah and you know you have gamers who literally just play story-based games and then you know i know mike is a big fan of barbie dream house oh i love so, it like, yeah yeah so you know we all have yeah, different not hello, hello kitty hello mentioned. kitty island adventure Great game. <laughs> <laughs> Butters, get out. Go buy World of Warcraft and join the online sensation before we all murder you. Um, <laughs> so, Mike, you sound like you were driving toward a point. Well, I, I'm i just thinking as we're starting to see gamers are all being driven into into these communities now, right? So we're, we're – and it's happening both – uh, on social media and on platforms like Twitch and YouTube, but it's also happening within the games themselves. Uh, so, you know, the, the, gone are the days where, you know, you went out, you bought a Nintendo cartridge, you brought it back, you slapped it in, you played through the game, and it was your thing, and you're done. Right. So, as we've got all these, how what I'm starting to wonder about is how the fuck do you make a game that satisfies that kind of audience? You don't. You don't. I mean, how how can you even come close? And and so well, that's. I think that's where the failings of games like Destiny came in. They tried to be everything for everyone. And well, ultimately, you know, the, that's, the, the short answer to that question, Mike, and and we're starting to see even that sort of fade away. Is you have to have something that's completely unique and new, which is very tough to do. But is why yeah. yep. when Fortnite or, launched, or you have to satisfy a particular audience. It was so audience. popular because it was super unique. Now there's yeah. ten thousand battle royale games, and so there's a split amongst even that community. And there's you know, and and it's going back to to you know the sort of uh, division that you're just you know you just described. But uh, ultimately, that's that's what it takes because there are so many different options now. There are so many not only types of games, but specific games within those types that cause even more divisions. You know, I mean, even um, you know, if you even if you're a hardcore FPS player, you know, then some people are going to be Halo, some people are going to be Call of Duty, some people are going to be Battlefield, some people are going to be what have you, you know. Um, True. And so, well, you, know, uh, you keep having yeah. all these splits because I think that back to when uh, specifically Remy and I started playing games together, there wasn't another game besides Halo. That's what you played, right? Like, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. If if you liked the FPS genre, that's what you played. I mean, shit, even if you didn't like FBI John, I mean, that's, you went online and you went and you scrolled that's where through everybody your was. That's where everybody was, you know, I, yeah. I, and, and you could get online every night and there was no problem getting 
a full big team battle team of oh, eight. Big team battle for the win every night. I mean, there was no problem. There were people there doing it. Now, dude, to, to find enough people to get something, you know, uh, you have you have to make a post about it. You have to you have to, yeah, have to call impossible. two friends. You know, you you have to, uh, you know, it, it's just not like that anymore. It becomes a pyramid scheme. I'm just trying to think because none of us who are here recording this are on the, you know, sort of the bleeding edge of the gaming audience, right? You know, we're not the people that are really, to a large extent, sort of determining um, popular taste. No. You know, we're 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 on the we're on the we're on the other side of that bell curve. We're on the downhill side of the bell curve. Um, you know, sort you know, people who are in the late teens, early twenties are sort of and if you look at what those people that age are playing on on twitch and on youtube and wherever it's it's all fortnite and apex that's all those those guys are playing um as those fade away you know and and eventually they will you know the 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 thing that i'm curious about or that i that i can't see past i guess is you know if if I'm Gearbox or Blizzard or Bethesda or CD Projekt Red or who the fuck ever, and I'm looking at the gaming landscape right now, and I'm trying to do something new and different, I mean, has it, you know has it become a theme party? Has it really all been done before? And yeah. so you know where just where do we go? And 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 what's next? Because well, I, I can't look looking at the way the gaming landscape is, and looking at the way the audience is stratified now, I can't, I can't say there's not, I can't see a unifying thing like like even Fortnite and Apex aren't unifying. What you're like saying they, is you can't see a, a theory show. of everything. Yeah, I know. You know, like is there going to be another, you know, zeitgeist moment like we had with. Mortal Kombat or World of Warcraft or, you know, or uh, or Halo on Xbox Live or, you know, what is that next thing? And I don't I, think that there is a next thing, dude. I disagree um, with you. Like with look, look at games like Red Dead Redemption 2, for example. That was one of the most anticipated games of this generation. I personally couldn't give two shits about it. Right. Um, there is no way to please everyone. Well, that's because you have poor taste from We've already discussed this. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> Another Rockstar game, GTA Five. Mike, I know you don't give a shit about it, nope. but there are people that live and breathe just that game. So you're never gonna find a game that satisfies everybody the way that when there was less selection, and with our age as a factor, yeah. and us being full time working adults with children, for the most part, it's it's become where we don't determine what the games are going to be because we don't have the time to play them. We're not the ones that they're trying to entertain. They know that if we yeah. want a game, we'll pick it up and that's that, but we're that's not it. going to spend the thousands of hours in a game because we don't have anything else to do with our time. Yeah. I, and, and, and maybe, you know, I'm, I'm sort of just pondering the imponderable to, to, to some extent. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I am, but it's just, the, the the more people I meet and the, the more I, you know, check out people's content and, and you know, spend time on Twitch and talk to folks, um, the more I'm realizing that, you know, we're we're we're, we're heading in the we're, we're, we're heading in a direction, but we're not. So yeah. if, if you're just sort of wandering aimlessly in the woods as a community and I feel like we, we're kind of doing that. Um, uh, well, in, but is that a bad the thing? thing, Mike? In the gaming, would, well, no, that... I don't know that it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying it's a thing. Uh, so, yeah. if, if this is sounding critical, it's not meant to. I so, just, you know, we're 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 sort of all, you know. So you, so Mike, um, you asked a question of like, what's the next big, next big thing, and is there, you know, is there even going to be one? Remy's answer is no. I fully disagree with him. Nobody saw well. the um. I know. Surprise, surprise. Somebody disagrees with Remy. No, <laughs> um, right? Usually, no, I'll yeah, guess what? <laughs> Disagreement is how we have conversation. Just get live with it. Um, <laughs> that's so true. Is that what a conversation is? <laughs> that's that's well, no, so just, fucking like, true. It's disagreeing is conversation. But, so you so shut here's up. the thing. Like <laughs> none of us, none of us saw the um, the battle royale coming until right. we right. saw 
PUBG pop up. And that was yeah. the last big thing. And then before that, there was something else. You know what I mean? There, there was the MOBA and everybody was making a MOBA. Now everybody's making a Battle Royale. Well, Guess but what? As, There's going to be Mike another out, thing that's like not, that. That's not unifying. Because not everybody plays It is in a sense just because it... Yeah, but not everybody was playing Halo. You say that everyone was playing Halo. During that time, I was not playing Halo. I played Halo 2 a lot, but I played it by myself. I didn't really play online except for when I lived with you for a little bit. Yeah. Um, after that, I didn't. I played the campaign a lot of myself by myself because I had it on a console at the time. And when I didn't want to play uh, on, you know, um, World of Warcraft for a little while, like, you know, I'd hop on there and play for an hour and then hop off and do other things. But like when you consider the great unification, which was during, like, I was guessing, I'm assuming it was Halo 3, which is what most Halo players would agree with that, the unification of Halo players at the time. I was sure. not part of Halo 3. I was playing other games. I played a lot of other different games at the time. There's always going to be outliers. Right now, of course. that's you. And I know and that's that's something you're not used to maybe because you you were there for Halo and you were there for a lot of these other big fads. Yeah, you Destiny weren't there for the mobile at all. Oh, you Jesus. you weren't there for it's the mobile. No, no, we're not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we we actually do need to wrap up because we're we're so pushing time. I'm, I'm just so mostly I'm saying don't worry, there is another thing. And yes, yeah. if you and Mike, if if any of us had the answer as to what the next big thing was, we'd be millionaires. we millionaires. Fucking right wouldn't tell you here on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd be having this. We'd be having and this I'd podcast be... on that guy's private yacht. Yeah, oh, oh, going, going yeah. No, seats. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm All excited right. to see what it is because it's going to be something interesting. I don't it's need gotta the next be good thing. I've got a thousand that. good things that I don't have time for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed. And uh, check us out on thesonsofglitches.com. You will find our Twitch stream, our Discord, our Instagram, all that jazz. And we cannot wait to see you there. Have a good night, folks. Night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Burp, 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 burp,